Nowadays, games are aimed at all ages rather than just children, with a few of the IPs, or the more successful ones in fact, designed solely for adults. But is this really a product of the modern industry? Some would claim it's from the PlayStation era, but does it come from before then? We're used to games with adult themes now. The dawn of the CD era allowed developers to push real-life video and more realistic visuals than ever. It was hardly a surprise when those visuals started to become sexier in nature. This helped lead to the age certification we have on games now, when complaints about games for violent and sexual themes caused the industry to catch the eye of the government. Chief among the games mentioned were Sega's recent CD entries, including Night Trap a game that involved the player trying to save scantily clad teenagers from masked stalkers. The images in Night Trap look tame now, but in those still early days of gaming, they were troubling. But that isn't where the industry's attempt to sell games using sex and controversy started. There are examples throughout gaming history. The most obvious game to bring up is the unlicensed Atari 2600 game Custer's Revenge by Mystique. Featuring a nude General Custer, the aim of the game was to get to a Native American woman and force himself on her. It was sold at an inflated price and in a wrapper that said not for minors. The controversy and attention the game received meant it managed to sell 80,000 copies, far more than Mystique's other adult-only titles. In the end, multiple lawsuits finally forced the game out of circulation. However, after Mystique closed its doors, Playaround re-released the game with minor changes under the name Westwood Home. Those other adult titles? Well, there's Bachelor Party, a breakout clone where the, where the bat is a naked man and the bricks are naked women. I don't even want to think about what the ball represents. And Beat 'em and Eat 'em, a game where you control two new women catching uh, fluids being produced by a naked man on top of a building. Moving on, we can take a look at some games on the more family friendly console, the Famicom. Now there were cartridge games available eventually, but it was really the arrival of the Famicom disc system that enabled these more niche titles. Being cheaper to produce, distribute and more importantly bootleg, it meant that even if you were selling to a more restricted audience, you could still make a profit. There were a few publishers, but Hacker International is probably one of the better known, with versions of existing games but with a nudity payoff, like versions of Breakout, which slowly reveal a nude woman or Sexy Invaders, released by its sub-label, Super Pig. It's, well, it's exactly what it sounds like. Now there are obviously hundreds of games we could cover. If you only included the text adventures that had a, an adult theme, there will be hundreds. But we're going to move to the era that really caused me to make this video. It's a topic that directly affected me, and I considered writing a book about this subject because of this era. I was born in the UK in the mid-70s. That meant my 80s involved 8-bit home computers. Specifically, I had a Sinclair Spectrum and lived in a world of 8-bit, blocky, colour-clashing arcade fun. Part of that fun were the magazines involved. Without the internet, the best way to get information was to read them. Back in the 80s, your choice of gaming magazine was almost as important as your choice of computer. We had several choices in the Spectrum camp, but the main three were Sinclair User, Your Sinclair and Crash. My mate Darren was a big fan of Crash, liking their more serious approach to things. I was a Your Sinclair fan, it fit my punk, young ones, viz loving, crude humour sensibilities. Our routine was the same though. On magazine day we'd go to the local newsagent, grab our magazine, third shelf, above newspapers and women's periodicals, below fishing and other hobbies pay our money and run home to read for the next hour. Then one day we went in. Darren got his crash as usual, but I couldn't see your Sinclair anywhere. After a fruitless search amongst the various PC business magazines, I approached the storekeeper. He listened to my query and then pointed up. Up beyond the fishing magazines to the unmentionable fifth shelf. The shelf geeky kids only looked at from the corner of their eyes and when nobody else was watching. The game Vixen had been released, and the hero was a female. This being the 80s, that meant the front cover featured a page 3 model, Kareem Russell, clad in a leopard skin bikini. Now we'd think nothing of this today. Adverts show far more skin every like afternoon. But in these days, it was enough to get it placed with the adult mags. 
The storekeeper still allowed me to buy it. This was the 80s after all. But this was my first taste of the effect of this more adult positioning. The Your Sinclair front cover had made publishers realise they could get away with this. It wasn't the first time though. Barbarian had released the year before with a box cover featuring Michael Van Wyck, who would later become famous as Wolf in Gladiators, as the hero and bikini-clad Maria Whitaker, also a page three model. And whilst this had hit some controversy, it hadn't affected me in the same way. It hadn't stopped the magazines being in the normal place, and it hadn't stopped me going out and buying the game. But the Your Sinclair cover had opened the gates. Sex sells. Now there's obviously there's far more things you could bring up on this, but this is really kind of the industry aging uh, as it went along. So we look nowadays and it, there are so many games that have got adult themes that it's kind of, it's almost ignored. It's certainly ignored in the sense that we know that children go out and buy those games, like things like uh, Grand Theft Auto, Battlefront, Call of Duty. All of those games uh, very much have uh, adult themes and they have certification to match those themes but we know that kids still play them especially if you play online on call of duty you definitely know that kids play them but back when i was a kid back when all this was happening and we didn't know anything about the famicom at the time the famicom was a distant memory especially in the uk where although the nes was popular it didn't really affect people that had computers we were sticking with computers if you if you already had them so this kind of these adult themes were, were very strange, especially when you think of the, the spectrum with its color clash and relatively limited ability to do graphics. It's a strange thing to think that it had these uh, these adult themes. And in the games, not so much. There were some adult games on the spectrum. Uh, not really many you'd find in W.S. Smith, admittedly. But um, the way that they were positioning them and advertising them, you could see the break between uh, the more kiddy, cartoony, uh, advertising towards the barbarian and vixen style of games where they were definitely trying to appeal to the male young adult market and trying to push that to get them to buy these games and it's not like these were bad games either like barbarian I, it's a very good game so it's a nice it's a, just a one-on-one -on -one beat a fairly simple one but it's a fun game vixen's quite good as well it's got very large graphics and it's uh, a fast uh, platformy run along game it's a absolutely fine game but this was more an attempt to produce uh, to to move the market into more into more adult themes and and it, as we know it worked when the mega drives advertising was far more adult orientated orientated the uh, say the jaguar as well and obviously the playstation which i personally a credit for growing the market in the first place that pushed to more adult markets as well just to grow the, the actual entertainment uh, audience for gaming it pushed into a, into other eras so yeah, it's um, it's an interesting topic, and we've gone for hours for it. But really, this is kind of these are just my thoughts that I want to put out. Just a simple Wednesday, Wednesday video, just uh, for a simple topic. At some point, yeah, I was going to write a book on this, but um, I kind of realised yes, you could write a book on it, but it would be, um, it wouldn't be a very good book. <laughs> because uh you could just put it to lots and lots of different features you could put the history of it but it's you it's the same themes again and again and again where yeah you've got games that feature adult themes uh and then you've got advertising just to advertise in adult ways games that don't feature themes and it's it's a kind of a roller coaster which continues through so you end up repeating yourself quite a lot throughout that but as a video as a simple wednesday video i think it works hopefully you agree right that's it thanks for watching if you enjoyed the video please hit like if you really enjoyed the video please hit subscribe if you didn't enjoy the video or you have something else to say then please leave it in the comments below see you next time